Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and searched for the proper wiring and stuff like that for the reds at the numbered doors because they'd gone missing. When we returned to the hospital room, they actually were there again, uh, but Snake is missing and Clover went to search after him. So, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and begin our search for the both of them. In front of the stairs that led to B-Deck, they decided to split up. They quickly assigned search areas, and they went their separate ways. Soon, only two of them were left. Those two were June, Pei, and June, who had been a few steps behind the others. Alright, we should go too. Yes, let's go. But, where should we start? Let's see... So we actually get uh, our decisions on where to go. Uh, don't worry, you'll be able to go to all of these places, so might as well just go in order. The casino. How about the casino on B-Deck? Okay, sounds good. And they took off up the stairs at a run. Before they knew it, they were there. So was Lotus. She was leaning against the wall, examining her nails. Hey, what do you think you're doing? She glanced up at him, unimpressed. Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Snake. I'm just not seeing it. Really? Maybe you need to look harder. Junpei didn't think that was the problem. Oh, by the way, I've got a proposal for you two. Care to hear it? Uh, let's listen to what she has to say. What is it? Well, I don't like to beat around the bush, so I'll get right to it. Why don't we team up? Team up? Yeah. What, you need me to explain it to you? I'm saying, why don't we go through a numbered door? Even if we wanted to, that's impossible. Why? Jumpy's bracelet is five, mine is six, and yours is eight. Our digital root would be one. Five plus six plus eight equals nineteen. One plus nine equals ten. One plus zero equals one. But there's no number one door in the large hospital room. The only doors there are 3, 7, and 8. Then we add another person. Huh? Who? Oh. What, isn't that easy? 7. She was right. They added 7. 5 plus 6 plus 8 plus 7 equals 26. 2 plus 6 equals 8. Then the four of them could go through the number 8 door. But... Whoa, hold on a sec. What about the other four? Why don't you add them up? That was simple enough. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10. 1 plus 0 equals 1. The digital root for those four would be 1. That's right. And... And you... Know the number one door isn't in the big hospital room, right? Of course I know that. No! Are you saying you'd leave them behind? Of course not. What kind of a woman do you think I am? Once we get off this ship, we could come back and rescue them, couldn't we? then we wouldn't really be leaving them behind. Don't try to lie to us. I don't think you'd do any of the th anything of the sort. Really? Why do you think that? You remember, don't you? We have less than five hours left. Even if we managed to escape, there's no way we could come back to rescue them in less than five hours. Well, you never know until you try. No, no, you're not thinking this through. Even if we brought Seven with us, we wouldn't be able to get off the ship. Four of us can open door nine. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The digital root for us four would be eight, so we'd have to add ace to make nine. All right. Unless we bring ace two, then we'll be stuck. Let us scratch the back of her ear. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. She didn't sound particularly bothered by what Junpei said, nor did she seem particularly surprised. Well, let's try to find another way, okay? A way to get out of here with all eight of us. That's impossible. Are you being serious? You do know that only five people at most can go through one of the numbered doors, right? The number nine isn't going to be an exception to that rule. Regardless, at least three people will get left behind. You're right. That is true. 
The moment he said it, Junpei felt the chill run down his spine. It was true. How Lotus could remain cavalier about so terrifying a prospect was beyond him. When they found the number 9, they would have to choose which three of them would die. Lotus's forehead furrowed. Do you think I could have a moment alone? There are some things I need to think about. Junpei and Jun turned and began walking away from Lotus. Talking to her left them feeling ill. Junpei's heart felt heavy, and his steps sluggish. But he told himself pessimism would get them nowhere, so he forced himself to smile and turned to Jun. Let's just focus on finding Snake for now, okay? Yes, you're right. We can think about those other things later. Junpei nodded. Alright, where should we go next? Next, let's go to the first class cabin. Let's go take a look at the first class cabin. It's really close. And they turned around and took off down the hallway to their left. Outside of the first class cabin, they found Clover. She was standing in front of the wall. She was staring at a meaningless point on the wall, her eyes blank. What should Junpei do? Let's talk to her. Are you alright? He did his best to sound friendly, but Clover didn't respond. Look, I know you're really worried, but... Um... He could think of no words to say that didn't sound hollow and fake. Junpei hesitated. Clover was so consumed by worry and fear that Junpei feared it would crush her. Her actions didn't surprise him. She had suddenly lost her brother, who she seemed to be very close to. Lone. Her voice was thin and barely audible. Lone. Huh? Lone. Hmm? I said leave me alone! Suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying! Just go away and leave me alone! Just looking at you guys is pissing me off! Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else! Stop bothering me! Junpei was taken ba aback. Such anger and hate. Jun's eyes had gone wide with surprise as well. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just... Alright, let's go, Jun. Y yeah They turned and left Clover. As they did, Junpei glanced back over his shoulder to see Clover wiping tears from her face. Clover had driven home the misery of their situation, but Junpei told himself that getting depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. For Clover's sake, they had to find Snake, and fast. He did his best to push away the misery and depression and force a smile. So where do you think we should go next? Well, we're two for two on situations being completely depressing. Let's hope third time's the charm. The hallway with all the same rooms. Hey, why don't we go back to C-Deck? We can take a look at that hallway with all the rooms. Okay, let's get going then. Together they ran down the stairs. Ahead of them, farther down the hallway, they spotted Ace. Hey, Snake, where are you? Answer me if you're there. Junpei paused. What did he want to do? Run to Ace. With Jun in tow, Junpei jogged up to Ace. Hearing their footsteps, he turned to greet them. Ah, hello there. Snake is... well, that's obvious, isn't it? I assume you haven't found him yet, either? Junpei nodded. I really wonder where he could have gone. Well, wherever he's disappeared to, we must find him as quickly as we can, for Clover's sake. Right. Jun's face looked kinda enraptured. By the way, do you think Clover and Snake are really siblings? Ah, why would you say that? Why would you say that? The question seemed somehow odd to Junpei. Why? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? They don't look alike at all. Ace looked at him for a moment and then spoke. Yes, you know, now that you mention it, they don't. Now that you mention it. Still, there are a great many siblings who do not look like one another. It certainly isn't rare. Junpei wasn't sure why or even if he was seeing what he thought he was, but he could have sworn that Ace's face tightened as he spoke. At any rate, we really must find Snake as soon as possible. 
The clock is ticking. We really can't afford to waste any time. Very well. Let's get back to the search, shall we? You can leave this area to me. Alright. Let's go, Jumpy. At June's urging, they left. They found themselves back at the stairs, but Junpei's mind was in turmoil. There's so much to think about, but... No, it would have to be put aside for now. As Ace had said, finding Snake was their top priority. Junpei did his best to clear his mind. Alright, where should we go next? Last place is back to the large hospital. Why don't we go back to the large hospital room? Okay, let's go then. They turned and headed back toward the large hospital room. On their way to the large hospital room, Junpei and Jun noticed Santa standing next to the number three door. Junpei paused. What should Junpei do? Let's talk to him. Junpei and Jun walked up to Santa. What are you doing? What, you can't tell? I'm checking out the red. Why? Is there something bothering you? What, it's not bothering you? Huh? This? The guts of the red. Why wouldn't you wonder who the hell put it back in here? Y yeah, that's true. Well, I'm curious too, but... Who do you think did it? Santa's eyes narrowed as he looked at June. She shook her head. I don't know. Well, what about you, Junpei? Who do you think fixed this thing for us? Hmm. Maybe it was Snake. Well, it seems like it would have to be Snake, wouldn't it? Maybe he got back here before any of us. He found the parts somewhere, put them back, and went through one of the numbered doors. No, that's not possible. You have to authenticate with at least three people that the red won't open. There's no way a single person could get through there by themselves. Y yeah, uh, I guess you're right. It was a stupid mistake and Junpei knew it. How had he made such a foolish miscalculation? How had Santa noticed it so quickly? Perhaps he just wasn't as clever as he used to be. Junpei shook his head sadly. So in other words, one of us is the person who fixed the red. Santa grinned. Bingo. We have a winner. But if that's true, then the person who did it doesn't want the rest of us to know that they fixed the red. Yeah. But why? No idea. Maybe if they come clean on that, it means we find out something else. Something bad. Something bad? Dunno. But whatever it is, it's gotta be worth hiding. Hmm. Of course! It could have something to do with Snake's disappearance. You think maybe they did something to Snake? It's not out of the question. Junpei ser stared at Santa. And there was something about him that made Junpei wary. At first, he'd assumed the other man wasn't terribly clever. But Junpei was beginning to think he would need to reevaluate that assessment. When Santa spoke again, his voice was quiet. Look, if you trust anybody in this game, you're gonna lose. You've gotta be careful. The person you trust the most could turn out to be the one who stabs you in the back. With that depressing suggestion, he turned and quietly walked away. Junpei and Jun looked at one another and smiled awkwardly. Where would they go next? And once you've checked all the rooms, then you can finish searching. Well, that got us nothing but depression. They looked everywhere they could think of, but Snake was nowhere to be found. Lotus looked around at six frustrated faces and spoke. We can't keep looking for Snake. Wherever he is, he's, it's not here. We need to get moving. Junpei couldn't disagree with what she was saying. Snake seemed to have completely disappeared. There was no point to wasting any more time. The others seemed to be having similar thoughts, but they stayed silent. Finally, Seven spoke. We don't got a choice. Lotus is right. We're not gonna find Snake. There's a problem, though. We've gotta figure out who's gonna go through which door. Yes, I have a proposal. She walked back and forth across the floor, her heels clicking against the wood. Finally, she stopped. Why don't we decide on one person to sacrifice? S sacrifice Well, perhaps that's a bit of a harsh word, but yes. You've all got 
You've all figured it out by now, haven't you? We can't all make it through those doors. We split into two teams of four and three people respectively, then three people will be left behind. We split into two teams of five and two people respectively, then two people will be left behind. But if we split into two groups of three and leave one person out, then only one person will be left behind. Leaving behind three people with two teams of four and three. Not sure. Junpei wasn't quite sure that was true. Wait a minute. Hmm? Two people get left behind if we split into five and two. One person is left behind if we split into three, three, and one. I got that part. We can't go through the numbered doors with any less than three people. But if we split into four and three, then why do three people have to be left behind? Just run the numbers. Let's say we go through door seven with one, four, five, six. Who's left over? And that would be three, seven, eight. And what's the digital root for that? 3 plus 7 plus 8 equals 18, so add the 1 and 8. 9. Exactly. But door 9 isn't here, right? That means 378 won't be going anywhere. That was just an example, of course. There are a lot of different combinations, but the result will always be the same. It doesn't matter which 4 it is, the 3 that are left over can't go through any of the doors. Go ahead and calculate it, if you have the time. You'll see. Anyway, that's how it is. Now, if we can get back to my proposal, we only have to sacrifice one person if we split into three, three, and one. When Seven spoke, his voice was strained. Den, you see we gotta decide who's gonna stay behind? Yes, we do. Given our circumstances, it's logically and morally the best solution. If the others if the other six are to survive, then one person has to sacrifice themselves. No, that's too cruel. What's so cruel about it? To, to just sacrifice someone like that. Then what's your plan? Maybe we should sacrifice two people instead of just one. That's not what I meant. We shouldn't sacrifice anyone. I told you that's impossible. Wake up. Whoa, whoa, calm down, you two. Santa stepped between Lotus and June. Look, what Lotus is trying to say is that you should aim to bring the greatest amount of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Exactly. That's how democracy works. And for that reason, I think it's only fair- I think the only fair way to decide who will be sacrificed is through a vote. What do you think? No, that's terrible! I'm not asking you! Shut up! What about you, Santa? Me? Well, I agree, I guess. Alright, that's one vote four. Counting mine, that's two. Seven? I can't say I agree with you, but, uh, we don't exactly have a choice. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die. Glad to see you get it. If I can get one more vote, then it's decided. What about you, Clover? Clover had moved away from the group and was sitting on one of the beds. Her whole body drooped. Junpei didn't know if she'd even heard Lotus's proposal. Lotus walked over to Clover and gently laid a hand on her shoulder. Your brother has to be behind one of the numbered doors. We searched everywhere, but we didn't find him. Doesn't that mean he has to have gone through one of them somehow? Clover slowly lifted her face. Let's go look for him together, okay? If we sacrifice one person, then we can go look for him. You... Agree with me, right? Clover nodded once. <laughs> the motion carries. Lotus spun around and walked toward Junpei. Now, let's start a vote to... That won't be necessary. Ace had barely spoken for Lotus's entire speech, and everyone jumped a little. Six pairs of eyes turned to look at him. He didn't seem to notice or even care. I will stay. That should solve our problem, yes. Uh, Ace, what are you saying? No, you can't do that. That won't solve anything. June's voice shook, and she looked around desperately for someone to agree with her. Ace simply looked at her. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. Huh? I trust you. Each and every one of you. I believe you'll come back for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's optimistic and then there's just nuts. Those doors only go one way. You go in, you don't come out. 
If we go through them, you won't be able to return, correct? Yeah. True, but that will not be the case once you've escaped from the ship. What? Please, I beg you. Once you've escaped, come back and rescue me. Ideally, within the time limit Zero has given us. No, that's ridiculous! There's no way we could get back in time. Finally, Junpei could hold his tongue no longer. We've only got five hours left! We don't even know where the hell we are! How on earth are we going to find someone to come and rescue you? Then, perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me. Or perhaps you would be willing to leave Jun behind. Ace's voice was dignified and without a hint of cruelty or malice. Junpei had no rebuttal. You see, there's no other choice. Then I see we've come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry yourselves about me. Go. Quickly. Junpei stood frozen by the indecision, unable to move. June bit her lips so hard that Junpei feared she would break the skin. Santa stood against the wall, calm and aloof. Seven tore his beanie from his head and turned it over anxiously in his hands. Only Clover stared at Ace with an expression Junpei was unable to decipher. Lotus's attitude, however, was different from the others. Good. Let's accept his kind offer, then. She smiled, her eyes bright. Ace answered with a smile of his own. Good. I think this is the best for me. Perhaps I'll be able to take a nap. Perhaps it's my age, but I get so tired easily this, these days. As he spoke, Ace lowered himself down to the floor next to one of the beds. From somewhere deep in the ship, Junpei suddenly heard the screeching of metal on metal. It was almost as if the ship were screaming. Would it really hold until their time limit was up? Already, D-Deck was flooded. In the sudden silence, the only sound was the sad metal wail of the ship. Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who spoke first. Well, what are you waiting for? We're wasting time. Why don't we hurry it up? As if a spell had been broken, the others all began to talk at once. You're right. We should get going. That's all we could do right now. Seven? Seriously. Honestly, I was getting kind of sick of listening to you guys all talk. You too, Santa? I... I have to find my brother. Wait, all of you. Let's just calm down and think about this. There has to be a way to get everyone out. There has to be. Right, Jumpy? Say something. Uh, yeah, let's think. There's... Gotta be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine. Forget about it. I'll figure it out on my own. She spun around and... She spun around and ran toward Ace. He had slumped down next to the bed when June grabbed his arm and pulled. Come on, Ace. Please stand up. You can't give up yet. We just have to sit down together and think about this. We'll figure out a way that, that we can all get out of here. Then it happened. Ace fell forward. He slumped over onto the wooden floor, his body folded in half like a boxer out cold. Ace! June cried out and dropped to her knees beside him. She put her arm around his neck and did her best to lift him up. What happened, Ace? Say something! She shook him frantically. His eyes fluttered open. I'm all right. His voice was weak and slightly slurred. How are you fine? This. He held out his left arm and slowly opened his hand. In it was a syringe and a small vial. The vial was empty. It had only recently been emptied. A few drops clung to the sides. There was a label taped to the side of the container. It read Soparil Beta. Soparil Beta. Junpei had no idea what it meant or what kind of medicine it might be. Did... Did you use this? Yes. It's just... anesthetic. I'll be... F fine. Anesthetic? I found it... earlier. While we were searching the... hospital rooms. I thought it might be useful... later. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be using it... on... myself. Why did you do this? Didn't I 
tell you, I'd like to take a nap. I really am very tired. Junpei knew that wasn't why he'd done it. Ace had injected himself with anesthetic to forestall Junpei and Jun's attempts to bring him along. If he couldn't move, there was nothing they could do. He'd injected himself so that they would be forced to leave him behind. Ace! Hmm. <laughs> Is there something you want to say? I'd just like to sleep a little. Could you keep it down? No! Don't, Ace! Don't fall asleep! Ugh. You feel warm. So comfortable. I think I'll have a nice dream. Ace's eyelids drooped further and further, almost as though he were dying. Ace! Ace! She shook his shoulder again and again, but this time he didn't respond. Only the gentle rising and falling of his chest told him that he was alive. Junpei was relieved to see he was, in fact, still breathing. He lifted Ace up off the floor and laid him on the bed he'd been leaning against. When Junpei turned around, Lotus gave him a look of pity. Well, we really don't have a choice now. We can't let his sacrifice go to waste, right? She wasn't feeling any remorse. Junpei was sure of that. Still, he held no grounds upon which to oppose her. It felt wrong, but he had to agree. And then suddenly, Santa spoke. Yeah, but we're not done choosing yet, are we? Huh? What do you mean? Well, we haven't decided who's going in what door. Ah, yes, that's true. Well, enough of screwing around. Let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? I, um... I want door number eight. It's the same number as my bracelet number. Got it. You're eight. You're next, seven. Which one do you want? I'll... I'll take, uh, seven. I can't get along with that old lady. What? What did you just say? Her face distorted by rage, Lotus took a step towards seven. He threw up his hands and made the face of it like a child who was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Ugh! You're going to get it next time. She shot him a glare that would have melted steel, then turned and stalked off. Alright, who's next? Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want? At last, Junpei's mind was already made up. And we'll make this decision in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!